Okay, fifth graders, we're starting three, yeah, three six, isn't it? I think it's three dash six. Anyways, um, this is really going to be a, a pretty short lesson because we're still multiplying, for the most part, a three digit number by a two digit number. And, um, you know, I think you guys can do this. I, I went over in detail in yesterday's video and also in the lesson. Um, the standard form versus partial products and you guys could use either one um, so this is an example here it says an antique steam train makes um, uh, let's see here uh, makes one sightseeing tour each day if every seat is filled for each trip how many passengers can it carry so um, and they show you the steps there they did find 31 times 208 and in steps two and three, they show you how they how they did that. I don't need to go over that. You guys know how to do this stuff by now. But then it says, convince me a model with math. Suppose the train fills an average number of 102 seats for each tour. What's a reasonable estimate for the number of passengers that the train can carry in 28 uh, tours? So what would that be? We're talking about an estimate, a reasonable estimate, 28 tours. So we're talking about 28 times uh, 102. Well, I would just change the 28 to 30, change the 102 to uh, probably some of you are already thinking ahead to 100, okay? And then 30 times 100 equals, well, three times one is three, right? How many zeros did we not factor in? Three zeros. So a reasonable estimate would be 3,000, okay? Pretty, uh, pretty easy. So uh, let's go down to the guided practice. Um, an auditorium, there's 104 rows with 24 seats in each row. How many seats are available? Um, and then uh, you guys could, can do that one. Then it says, number two, it says, why is it important to estimate uh, to check for reasonableness? Um, I would say to check Um, to check, I think I'll, uh, for accuracy. I mean, if you, if you come up with an answer, let's say it's uh, 216, and then you do an estimate and you come up with 758, well, actually, that would be an estimate. How about an estimate of 700? Uh, uh, there's a problem because it's not even close. Your answer should be pretty close to whatever estimate uh, you come up with. So estimating is, as they suggest here, is a good way to check for um, uh, for your answer to see if it's correct or not. So um, I don't know. Let's do uh, let's do number six here. Three hundred and two times thirty. Okay. Well, anything times zero is zero. So uh, zero times two, zero times zero, and zero times three. Those are all zeros. And so I just put down zero, zero, zero. Then remember the placeholder. And now we start with three times two. Well, what's that? That's six. And then three times zero. Well, what's that? Zero. And then three times three is nine. Now we just simply add it up. Zero, six, zero, nine. 9,060 is the answer for number six. 9,060, okay? So it looks like you guys have quite a few problems. All of them here have zeros in them, which actually kind of speeds things up. It makes it a whole lot easier. And I'm pretty confident you guys can all do that by now. All right, let's look at the last page here, the problem solving page. Um, let's see if there's any that look problematic or difficult. There's 27 students in Mr. Milo's class. Uh, find the number find the total number of pages the students read by the end of November. Okay, so here's November. So it looks like it's we're going to be talking about these three months here, September, October, November. Um, there's 27 in his class. And so it looks like you're going to add up these three numbers, whatever that is. I'll let you do that. And then you're going to multiply that by 27. That's how you would do that one. Number 20 says each student read 41 pages in December. 
How many total pages does the students read by the end of December? Okay, so whatever your answer is, then you're going to add to that, it's gonna be 41, it was 41 pages in December times 27. And then you're gonna add whatever that answer is, and then you'll get um, the answer to number 20. How many total, oh wait, no, actually, sorry. It says, it just asks how many total pages does the students read? Oh yeah, that's right, total pages. So you're including these three months and December. Okay, so I was right. So that's how you would do it, you would add them up. Um, 21, Meredith says that 15.17 is greater than 15.8 because 17 is greater than eight. Do you agree, explain your reasoning. Let's look at it here for a moment. We're going back here into uh, chapter two. So here's our number, 15.17, and we're comparing that to 15.8, okay? 15.8. So um, what place is this? This right here is the tenths place. Okay, if I can write decent, we'll get it. And this is the, the seven is in the hundredths place. Okay. And how many hundredths go into the tens? All right, it would, um, actually, that's probably not the best way to explain it. Um, well, 10 of them do. So we'd have to increase, if there was three more, then this would become a two, okay? Um, so which is greater, uh, the two or the eight in the tenths place? Well, obviously the eight is greater so we've got a ways to go before this would be even close to this, okay? The eight is greater. Remember how we would, um, I think one of the ways we did it is we'd write the numbers like 15.17 and then 15.8, and I can put a zero there. And then we just start comparing them. Well, the ones are the same, that doesn't matter. Fives are the same, Doesn't that doesn't matter. Oh. Here's the difference. Which is larger? The eight, okay? So that's the one that's going to be the larger number. All right. Um, 22, Trudy wants to multiply 66 by 606. She says that all she has to do is find six times 606 and then double that number. No, that won't work. Why wouldn't that work? Um, so you're going to have to do that problem. You'll actually do 66 times 606. So if she did do 606 times 6, let's see. That's going to be 36, put down the three, put down the six, carry the three. Six times zero is zero, plus three is three, and then six times six is 36. So it's going to be 3,636. That's 606 multiplied by six. And so she doubled it, then she would just add this together. All right, 3,636. And then uh, we're going to end up with uh, 12, put down the 2, carry the 1, 6, 7, and then 12 again, carry the 1, so 7. So 7,272, which is what Trudy would have come up with, okay? Uh, that doesn't work because um, 6, you know, is not half of 66. Half of 66 is 33. So if she actually multiplied 606 times 33, 
and then came up with an answer and then doubled that, that would work. But for some reason she's thinking six uh, is half of 66. And you guys know it's not. 23, 24, Maria needs a trombone, 12 months renting, 34 months, she can buy the trombone, for, okay. So should she buy it or rent it? That's what they're asking. So you're going to have to figure out which is cheaper, to buy it or to rent it. And so renting it would be 12 months and each month is 34 months. So you're gonna to have to do 12 times 34 and see which is larger. Number 24, another music store rents trombones for 30 per month, okay, plus a yearly fee of $48, which is a better deal. Okay, so now, now you're going to do 12 times 30, but then you're going to add in the $48, okay, because it's cheaper in this other store, it's only 30 a month. Remember over here, it was $34 a month. But this store here, where it's only 30 a month, has a yearly fee of $40, which is a better deal, $48. And then 25 here, what's the product? 709 times 41, you guys can do that. Okay, that's it, easy peasy. I will see you guys tomorrow.